If you're an audio professional or a newbie getting into spatial audio, in this video I'm gonna share with you my favorite plugins for creating immersive mixes. Now here's the catch. This video is not about immersive plugins. Instead, these are basic tools that you may already be using for creating stereo mixes. However, they're essential for creating immersive mixes that translate to other systems. This is Alex from Alex Pro Mix. Let's go. Hey everyone and welcome back to Alex Pro Mix. I'm an audio mix engineer and I specialize in immersive audio. Over the past two years, I've delivered 200 mixes done in Dolby Atmos for artists and labels. And in this video, I wanted to take some time and share with you some of my best practices for creating immersive mixes that translate. Now, before we begin, let's clarify what we mean when we say immersive mixing or spatial audio. Picture yourself at the center of a sphere with music enveloping you from all directions, above, behind, around you. That's the essence of spatial audio. It mimics real life. Unlike stereos mixing two channels, immersive audio opens up a 360-degree sonic landscape. Being that Dolby Atmos requires a minimum of 12 speakers, with seven speakers in the horizontal plane, four speakers in the ceiling, and the nail feed channel, it's important to know that when you pan instruments to the side, they're gonna have a different sonic appearance than if you pan them to the rear or above you. Now you can use this to your advantage as opposed to using traditional EQ and filters because if you want something to sound a little darker, well, guess what? You're gonna pan it behind you. But if you want something to be real bright and very prominent, you might pan it to the center channel or to the side speakers. One of the recurring issues that I encounter when creating immersive mixes for clients is that when they send me the process stems, let's talk about maybe the acapella vocal stem. It's got compression, it's got EQ, it's got de-essing, it might have some modulation effect, reverb or delay, all embedded in that stereo stem. Well, guess what? A lot of times that vocal stem is gonna have pops and clicks that are not necessarily detected in the stereo mix because in a stereo mix you're cramming everything to two channels but in an immersive mix the moment you start pulling apart those stems into the room they become obvious and so the first category of tools that i depend when creating immersive mixes are declickers Vocal stems can often have pops and clicks, maybe a breath or something that's a little bit too loud in the mix. And while these things go unnoticed in the stereo version, in the immersive spatial audio version, they can definitely stand out. Mm -hmm. I want some good love and loyalty. I like to use Isotopes RX mouth declick to target specific mouth noises like pops and clicks. The second category of plugins that I rely on when creating immersive mixes are dynamic EQs. In a stereo mix, you have to make compromises. If the piano sounds low-endy, <laughs> if the piano sounds too heavy, and it's competing with pads, well, guess what? You're probably gonna scoop out the low mids or even roll off the lows from the piano to make room for the pads in the stereo mix. Well, the same rules apply when creating immersive mixes, but it's a little bit different because the moment you pan instruments into the room, the tonality of that sound changes naturally because the way the room is EQ'd, the way that the speakers are set up, or just the placement of the distance between you and now the object. So to remedy this type of problem, when instruments that are being panned into the room sound too heavy or too bloated, you want to use dynamic EQs. One of my favorite dynamic EQs is the Isotope Stabilizer. I start off with my default setting and all I have to do is adjust the amount until I see it finding the frequencies that it needs to clean up and it does it automatically. I no got time to play. Another type of dynamic EQ, if you will, is Sooth 2. And Sooth is great for de-harshing sounds, making them sound smoother, especially vocals. So this applies both to stereo mixing, but especially to immersive mixes, because as you pan instruments near the listener, well, guess what? All the mouth clicks, all the mouth pops, all the mid-range of the vocals or instruments that have 
high-end information on them, like high mids, well, guess what? They become a little bit too obtrusive, so they become too loud. And instead of just turning them down, I like to shape the tonality of the mid-range by using Sooth 2. So if I tell you things, believe. I'm just a boy you need, and I won't make a movie. Go for the Lord. I got this strong, get the vagabond. But now you fit to run them soft. I they put in work, I know he let go. For the Lord. I give you check in my catalog. I they run a monologue. But all on God, you all on Jack. Me. All right, before we move on to the third category of plugins, if you enjoy this type of content, I invite you to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Let's get back to the video. All right, a third category of plugins that I rely on heavily when creating immersive mixes are transient shapers. Transient shapers are common in stereo mixes to enhancing the transients of percussive instruments like kick, snare, toms or percussive elements you see in immersive mixing there's no way to like globally squeeze or globally limit your sound like your mix you can't there's no global limiter for that sick especially when you're mixing different types of tracks like mono tracks versus stereo tracks some tracks are panned to the bed other pans are assigned to objects there's no like easy way to like get all those tracks to communicate with each other there are plugins out there, but the moment you exceed the uh, delay compensation of the DAW, then that whole thing gets broken. So I'd rather not rely on that. However, in stereo mixes, you can put a limiter or you can put a compressor and squeeze the mix. And what's going to happen is that it's going to enhance the transients of the mix, of the kick and the snare, maybe the vocals or bass track. So how do you create that effect in immersive mixing if you can't use like a global limiter or global compressor? Well, for that, I like to use Split EQ. Split EQ allows you to adjust the transients independent of the tonal information. And particularly, I find myself using Split EQ on kicks, snares, and sometimes bass tracks to kind of shave or shape the transients of those instruments before they get summed up into the immersive playback. Now, what's cool about Split EQ in particular is that you can shape those transients and that translation is going to work both in the speaker mix as well as in the binaural mix. All right, my last category of plugins that I rely on when creating immersive mixes are volume boosters. You're like, volume boosters? Where does that fit? As I mentioned earlier, there's no global way to like glue your tracks with compression, right? So Sometimes you might find yourself like wanting to increase the low volume information of your mix. And for that, I rely heavily on my 714 folder aux configuration that allows me to send any channel to this folder and then that folder goes to the bed. By inserting Waves MV, I'm able to boost up the low information of a mix, getting the dynamics sounding a little bit more prominent to the listener, squeezing the dynamics, and retaining that loudness target of minus 18 that Dolby requires. For now, just know that if you want to turn up the volume of the low-level information, use a tool that does upward compression like Waves MV2. When my depression works the graveyard shift all of the people I have ghosted stand there in the room I should not be left to my own devices They come with prices and vices I end up in a crisis Alright guys, while there's so much more to discuss about immersive mixing, I'll stop right there. 
Also, if these are plugins that you're already using in stereo but never thought about using them this way in your mixes, please leave me a comment. Also, if you want to watch a follow-up video on my favorite top immersive plugins, let me know so I can create that content for you as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate you hanging around, sticking around, and be sure to add your feedback in the comments below. I'll see you guys again real soon. Peace.